Hello, this is Loopline, and in this video I'm going to cover uh, an email scraper concept. I've had a lot of people ask specifically about scraping emails. Now I have another video on the email scraper which I'll link to in the description here, but a lot of people seem to want to know specifically how to take a keyword or group of keywords and get them to an end result of having emails uh, related to that, either company, companies or personal, that sort of thing. So. Basically, I'm going to take two different approaches in this video, and, and there obviously could be other different ways you can do this, but this is the concept. One would be scraping Google on the front end, just organic search. The other one would be using the Google Maps scraper, which is in the custom harvester, to drill down to a more local result. So first off, let's say I'm looking for yoga. Um, my wife has yoga stuff. It came to mind. So um, let's do yoga and let's say I don't have my keywords. If I just have the keyword yoga, I'm probably going to go to the keyword scraper, type it in, do like Google suggests, maybe some other ones, and scrape a level deep and pick up some other keywords. Um, for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to do one keyword because otherwise we're going to get too broad and we're going to have a, a, a large data set. But first you're going to get your keywords. So scrape up some keywords, go through there and pick out the ones that are appropriate to your topic, and then can go from there. So let's do um, yoga poses as well. I know that's a very popular thing. So let's first scrape Google with this. And I'm just going to go ahead and not use the custom harvester. And I'm just going to use Google. I don't really need proxies because it's only a couple of terms. And I'm just going to go hit start harvesting here and let this go. And I'll pause the video. Okay. And the harvester is complete. And looks like we got uh, 1400 results. I'm just going to go ahead and remove duplicate URLs just for the sake of it here. And so we got 1,396 results. And then basically, I need to extract the inner pages from these. So these are some of these are inner pages, some of them are root domains, um, and some of them obviously are no good. Like you know, apps.microsoft.com necessarily isn't going to give us probably much, but it might. So as we look through here, there's a couple of different ways I can extract internal pages. And the reason I want internal pages is because the email grabber itself will only extract URLs from the UR or the emails from the URL you give it. So if you give it a home page and the email isn't on the home page, then it's not going to get it. If the email is on a page that's like, you know, contact us, then it needs to have that exact URL loaded in because it just loads the page, looks for email addresses and pulls them out. So basically we need to pull a bunch of internal pages in order to kind of maximize our exposure here. So there's a couple different ways we can do that. One is by using the site feature in Google. So I've got 1,396 here. First off, let's just go ahead and save this list for the sake of it so that we have it. I'm just going to call it email starts. Uh, because obviously we would want to be able to scrape these internal pages and there's 1,396 of them, so I don't want to lose those. And if you're doing a broader keyword search, you might have thousands. So then I'm just going to go ahead and remove duplicate domains and take us down to 518, trim to root. And basically that'll give us root domains and we're going to use the site operator in Google to pull internal pages. And I'm just going to call it email site here. And I'm going to clear this out and go over here and load in my list of URLs there, that root domains, and I'm going to put site up here in the footprints, and I'm going to use the actual delete key on my keyboard to get rid of the .edu there. So I just have site like this, making sure custom footprint is ticked off. Uh, and then I'm just going to pull, this is going to give me what Google thinks are the indexed internal pages. And I'm just going to hit yes here. And actually, I'm going to go back and add some proxies because 518 keywords is a lot. So I'll pause the video while I do all that. And it's harvesting actually still, but I thought just a, a quick note to throw this in. I've said it other times, but um, I use private proxies to scrape. You see I've got 10 proxies and I'm using two connections. Um, that's probably a little bit aggressive actually with the site operator. I wouldn't normally do that, um, but I'm not going to scrape tens of thousands of results here. I'm just going to do a few. Uh, but the point of this is, is that if you use shared or private proxies and you want to safely scrape Google, I do have another video, which I'll also link to on how to do that. Uh, I would probably go with more like one connection for 10 proxies. So for every 10 proxies or maybe even every 15 proxies with advanced operators like the site operator and other operators, um, 
set like one connection for every 15 proxies. And again, more in depth on that in the video there, but thought I would toss it out with the Google scraping. But the point of that really was you can do a lot with uh, private proxies. I only have two connections going and I'm harvesting between 80 and 140 URLs a second as it varies, obviously, depending on how many URLs are kicked back for any given site query for a given domain. Um, so just throwing that out there. All right, I've got like 7,800 URLs here, almost 8,000. So I'm going to go ahead and abort. We can see a lot of the domains completed. Uh, plenty of them did not, but that's okay for the purpose of this video. Now let's just go ahead and remove duplicate URLs again. And now I have uh, my 7,900. Let's go ahead and do the import and add to and do our um, first set of URLs that we had, which I think I called email starts. Uh, and then that remove duplicate URLs one more time, just making sure we add back in all the URLs we have there. So now I have 9,331 URLs. Now I could go ahead and pull emails on this if I wanted to. I can also export them now that I have my site pulled and I let that finish. And let's do email for link extractor. So now we can use the add-ons here and we can use the link extractor add-on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and load in that file that I just had. And let me get that loaded up here and we'll bring in all these URLs. Now, uh, it's also good to note, and I should have done this, uh, these are a lot of domains all at once, so we don't want to hit these in order because that'll be hammering those domains. So I'm going to pause the video and go back out and export and randomize here. Actually, let me just show you. So you go to export and randomize list, which would be important for link extractor there. And now that we've exported and randomized, we can go back to our link extractor and import the URLs. And they are in random domain order. See there. So 20 connections, that's fine. I'm only looking for internal links again. And so hit start and let it go through here and read these URLs. And you can see we'll amass a lot of URLs very quickly. And then what we can do is take and export these out, save them off, and re import them. And then again, pull internal links. So if you don't want to deal with being blocked by Google, you don't even have to do the Google site operator or site operator for any other engine because it works for Yahoo and Bing and that sort of thing. So you can use those. Um, you can actually just take your original list of URLs, which is like 1300 or whatever, load them into Link Extractor, pull internal, export the results out, and then load them back in, and then keep pulling internal, exporting, and pulling results, export out and pull results back in and keep um, extracting internal pages. But you can see you can amass a lot of URLs quickly. Uh, we've up to 21,000, 28,000, 29,000 URLs very quickly there. So I'm going to go ahead and abort this because we don't need to work with that many URLs and export this uh, and then call it, uh, I'm just going to call it one just to keep things simple. Now what I would do is take my original 9,300 URLs, import in or the 9,300 after I took my original URLs plus the URLs I pulled from the site scrape, bring those back in and add in the 30 something thousand we just had, remove duplicate URLs. And now I have um, from a very small amount of domains there, like the 518 domains, I have pulled up 41,000 different URLs. And now I can use the email grabber on. We probably want to randomize again so that we're not hitting the same domain over and over again. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and export and randomize as well. Uh, I'm just going to give it random numbers here. Clear this out and import. Do import and add to. If you do import and replace, it automatically alphabetizes. If you do import and add to, it leaves them in the order they're in. And so it brings them in in random order. So something else that a lot of people might want is under options, you have the option to set the email grabber to save URLs with the email. So rather than just getting the email, it'll have the email and then the pipe key and then the actual URL that that email came from. Also should look at your settings for the actual email grabber. And so I have it set to 10 and that should be sufficient for what we're doing here. We're going to go to grab check and we're going to grab emails from harvested URL list and I'm just going to hit start and then it's going to give me an error that I need to select a user agent and the, the reason for that is is that different URLs or platforms rather may respond differently to certain user agents. In fact, some of them actually straight up block certain user agents 
And so if you know what user agents are and how to use them and uh, some things you want to set a particular one to go for it, otherwise you can really just pick something and it should be fine. If you find that you're working with a particular domain and you're trying to get emails from it and it's just coming back with like an error or it's just blocking you but the page works in a browser, then go ahead and change it to a different user agent and see if that works. And so I'm just going to hit start and we can see it going through here reading and it's going to pull up emails. Now remember this is a random assortment of internal pages of domains. So you can see a lot of these aren't going to have emails, which is pretty normal, um, but plenty of them will have emails as well. And with 44,000 different uh, URLs to go through, there's a lot of uh, URLs to go through, although only 518 domains. So if you were looking for companies, you couldn't really expect to get potentially more than 518 companies probably to actually contact there. So um, once this is done, and I'm just going to stop it so we can see how we wound up here and finished up got 29 unique email addresses here so we can see the emails and then you can see as you go through like right here there's the pipe key and then we have the actual URL uh, that we can see uh, and then we have different email addresses here that we can see and that is one method to try to go ahead and get emails from different places but um, that is using straight Google for your keyword and expanding internal pages and then grabbing emails from them. And so I'm just going to go ahead and get out of this. And now we're going to try to go with particular places and do the Google Maps scraper. So first thing I'm going to go to settings and use custom harvester. And we can look at our custom harvester settings here. Um, I'm not even going to use proxies because I don't care and how many proxies to retrieve before harvesting. I'm going to set it to one. If you're using private proxies, you probably want to do this, set it to one and do use loaded proxies. Otherwise, there's a separate video, again, which I can link to on the custom harvester, but they're all on this same YouTube channel. So once I have that all set up appropriately, I'm going to go ahead and put in my keyword. Go ahead and then I need to incorporate my location so that the Google Maps knows where I'm trying to get it from. Otherwise, it's just going to pull based off of your IP address most likely and give you local for your city, um, which is fine if you want to do that. But I'm looking for a broader range. So let me put this together right quick. And so what I did here was I actually made a text file. I am just made up some stuff. Um, let's say I want yoga poses and yoga for California uh, state, a particular city such as just Detroit, a couple of uh, countries like United Kingdom and Canada, and then cities uh, and you know that sort of thing. So uh, these are just locations, obviously. And if I make a text file and don't put this token in here, and then I use the merge feature, so I just have like California, Detroit, United Kingdom, it will put my keyword out here on the right side of it, which is probably okay. Um, I want to go ahead and put my keyword on the left side of it. So I use percent KW percent. Again, I have uh, tutorials, videos, and on Scrapebox FAQ information about this. But you just use this uh, token, and anywhere you put this token on a line, it will put that particular keyword. So pretty handy, and I've saved this off. Now I'm going to go over here and go to Merge, and I'm going to select that file. And you can see it takes yoga, California, and it replaces that percent KW with my actual keyword. And it duplicates it because it had yoga poses. It put California twice on the end of each one of them. So it'll go through your whole keyword list. So if you have like 50 keywords, it'll put all of them in front of California. And then it goes through all of them in Detroit and so on and so forth. So that's how the merge feature works. And that can be really handy for using this. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit start harvesting. And when this comes up, I'm just going to choose Google Maps. And I'm going to hit start. And I'm going to let it go through here and scrape from Google Maps for these locations. And I'll pause the video while that does that. And actually, while that's scraping, I assume that most people know what Google Maps is. But if you, know, if you go to Google and I type Yoga Detroit, it brings up these localized type listings you can see down here. And then it brings up an actual map. So if I were to click on that, I'm actually going to maps.google.com. And we can see that as we come in here, um, we can see... Uh, a map placement and then down the side here we get all these different locations and then there's multiple pages 487 results actually uh, and then they all have websites or obviously not all of them but many of them are going to have websites so that is what we're talking about when we're talking about Google Maps okay and I've got well over a thousand results here obviously if I were to let this go I would have more but I'm gonna go ahead and stop it uh, and we can see you know all the different uh, domains and one of the things about Google Maps is as a general rule 
you're probably going to get the home page because that's just what Google links to in the map. Sometimes it could be an internal page, uh, but as a general rule, it's going to be the home page. In fact, I'm almost sure that it's almost always the home page, except for like this is a particular, you know, locations Ontario. And so that's pretty handy. I'm going to go ahead and remove duplicate domains just because there could be some bleed over depending on, you know, if I put in multiple cities, but not much, uh, a thousand different unique domains. And so obviously last time uh, when we did a straight, a straight Google scrape, we had uh, 518 domains, I think, and I only let this run through a few of these Google map things, although we obviously have some Toronto stuff, so that could be all the way down here that it finished. But anyways, um, you get the point. It's a great way to pull in localized things. And once again, we can use the same concept. I can trim to root and do the site up here where I pull in and load in all these over here and pull internal pages. And I could use a link extractor again to go through them and expand my list just like I did in the first time. I'm not going to redo all that because we just did all that. Uh, and it's the same exact concept. The starting point was Google Maps though versus regular Google. Obviously you could do both and combine them together. Obviously you could scrape other engines, Yahoo, Bing, in the custom harvester. Of course there's tons of engines uh, that we can see that we can choose from all the way over here. Just Google Maps is the one that has the maps integrated, but you can build your own in too. And so we could scrape from all these engines. Lots of starting points that we could do to get locations. And then basically we just expand the internal pages of those websites and run scrape for emails. And we can even do a email check and see if there's any emails on these home pages because there may be emails just on home pages. And maybe there isn't, but no, there's some. So you can see that uh, maybe their contact page is actually quite a lot. It seems like these may be um, smaller business websites and we'll let it stop and we'll look at those here and 45 unique email addresses from uh, those domains home pages. So lots of opportunity to get emails that you can mail people. Uh, be aware that the laws regarding mailing people can vary from uh, country to country. So again, I don't do mailing. Uh, and I'm not going to instruct you on how to actually send the mails, but this is how you can scrape those email addresses using Scrapebox and starting at the point of having keywords and ending up at the point of having email addresses related to those keywords. And that's how you can scrape targeted emails from your keywords.